G'day guys, Linderman here in uh, Armor 3 Dev Build. Now this is the day that Rota Lib was added to the Dev Build, so we've got advanced uh, flight mechanics or flight modeling in the uh, in the helicopters. Uh, this is coming for the helicopters DLC, uh, which is really awesome. I was looking forward to this. I mean, I, I got Take On Helicopters. I finished Take On Helicopters. Huge fan of it. And so I thought I'd jump in here and do a first impressions video. Uh, the short version is first impressions, oh my god, this is terrible, and I'm going to die. Uh, really sluggish, doesn't respond at all to minor movements uh, of the cyclic. Um, you, you, and really, it seems that the momentum of the aircraft is uh, bouncing around all over the place, so you can uh, try and react with small movements. The helicopter just doesn't follow what you're doing. Uh, you get into pilot-induced oscillations, and you crash and burn. So that's what happened to me, and it took a little while to figure out what was going on. So that was the first attempt. This is the second attempt. I'm going to basically not edit any of this stuff, in case you think I'm cobbling together um, videos of once I've figured it out. But this is literally the first and the second go. What I've done here is I've gone in and looked at my controllers, and I have removed all dead zones. So if you were um, struggling like I was initially that's the thing to do I was gonna add curves as well to the controller setup so my controller is a Thrustmaster Warthog it's an expensive piece of kit dead zone basically gets rid of any center play any kind of twitching um, which you would normally use with a really cheap joystick that maybe has a bit of anomaly that goes on around there bouncing around um, I think Dead Zone is uh, the devil's plaything, and it should be um, completely removed. If you put in a little bit of movement around the center to, um, to you know what you need, then that should reflect in game. Um, so if you have problems with the sensitivity around the center play of your joystick, then add curves around that to make it more or less sensitive as you require. Generally speaking, you'd maybe add a little bit more sensitivity around the middle so you can get that finer action going. But Dead Zone is going to make your uh, your joystick completely unresponsive. So I've, I've done that, and I'm, I'm sort of getting used to it now. I do fly in DCS, but I never fly in Armour 3. Um, pretty much never. I have done very short videos of um, just roaming around Altus, having a look around, but I, in multiplayer, um, in our tactical missions, I never give it a go. Um, so this is quite different for me. Um, I did do take on helicopters, but I'm pretty much used to DCS. Uh, in terms of realism, I have turned off every assist, and I have turned on every sort of realism. So rough landings is on. So if I land too hard, it will crumple. Um, stress is on. I've obviously turned off the HUD, and uh, I have the paddle switch on the front of my joystick as the zoom. I also have it as wheel brake, so I'm going to have to rebind that. Uh, coming in for the first landing, and I abort because uh, the vertical speed is way too high. Uh, so just getting used to landing. Uh, the vertical speed indicator is one of the big six. So if you look at the front dash, there's a big six in the top left. Those are what you've got to keep your eye pretty much on. The bottom right of the big six is the vertical speed indicator, and you want to keep that uh, it's in hundreds of feet per minute descent. You can see we're probably doing about 500 or 1,000, so that's not good. So once again, I bought that. Um, just getting used to landing. I don't think there's ground effect. Haven't really felt it. Um, but there's my first landing. A little bit of a rolling stop. If you are getting used to flying, I recommend that you don't do a zero zero landing, which is zero, um, basically hitting zero altitude and zero um, speed at the same time. You can do a little bit of a skid um, and you should basically keep it a little bit controllable. If you have any issues with flying with Rotolib, I believe it will be around pilot induced oscillations. That means that you correct and you overcorrect and then you try to correct the correction and you overcorrect again and you just go back and forward and back and forward in uh, wider and wider oscillations until you crash. So I'm trying to avoid that, and it really comes down to preempting the oscillation before it happens. So if you do a sharp bank, uh, with a bit of experience, you'll know that uh, maybe a reaction is coming in the physics, and you'll be able to hit it, but not over hit the, uh, the reaction. Um, so I think this is something that 
uh, you could probably quite easily spend hours and hours refining flying in armor 3 with this rotor lever. It is really fun. You can see I've been doing this for a couple of minutes and I'm I'm not completely confident by any stretch but I'm at least able to control it almost hitting those power lines there I think. Um, I didn't really see them so I'm going to assume there were power lines there but um, it's it's something that I think if I were to put hours into this you could be a pretty reliable pilot. The first time I tried it in the other clip uh, my, my feelings were oh boy this is not something that's ever going to be usable so I'm pretty happy at this point. You can see there I did uh, have a bit of a um, uh, a bank going on left and right and trying to correct that with um, with some stick movements so um, that's some of the the uh, pilot induced oscillations that I was mentioning but I, I managed to null it out and that's the important thing okay so just uh, pushing it forward into forward flight uh, some of the mechanics I haven't really noticed I know there's no uh, vortex ring state so settling with power you won't have to worry about coming down too fast with um, airspeed being low and the helicopter falling out of the sky that's probably the big killer in DCS and other simulators it's not in this um, that said you will have to keep an eye on that vertical speed to make sure that you are not going to hit too hard um, I haven't really noticed much of a transition at all between um, well translational lift and uh, the engines holding the helicopter up with brute force in uh, slow speed so um, there's quite a difference uh, in DCS where you transition to forward flight suddenly you get a big kick of lift from the fresh air entering the rotor disc uh, the torque all changes and, and, and you're basically on your way and that that happens uh, when you're transitioning into a hover or um, going out of the translational lift there's this massive change in the um, in the dynamics of where you hold the cyclic where you hold the pedals all that sort of thing. That doesn't appear to exist in Armour 3. Um, it does have torque, which is kind of nice, um, and it's just a little bit, yeah, it, it's it's more complex to, than the vanilla flight model, but it's it's not on the same level as, uh, as I'm sure uh, you're probably aware. Um, there was a little uh, simulated combat landing there, just in, in the streets, just checking out whether I could control it. I don't think I'd be dropping off uh, infantry, you know, on rooftops or things like that anytime soon. But you can get in and out of tight spaces still with this helicopter. So uh, some of the other things that uh, I haven't noticed in this flight model, um, the, the trimmer doesn't seem to be particularly important um, versus DCS where you're trimming all the time, trim, 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 with just to uh, save your arm from minor stick movements. I've got an extension on my Thrustmaster Warthog, so the stick is quite a bit longer, which makes it quite nice to sort of hold in a particular place. I also have the trimmer button, uh, or the pinky, the pinky button set to trim. So whenever I hold the stick in a particular place, I press that, and that's the new center point, uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I, I've used it a couple of times, and um, I haven't really felt a great need to use it at all so that's that's probably a little bit of a, a key difference with a, maybe a real helicopter where you may be using the force trim quite a bit you don't really need to in this um, but you know your mileage may vary some people may need to um, to use the force trim feature quite often depending on the stick that you have um, so just coming in here I think hovering would be quite complex just just due to the, the feedback I don't have any of the uh, the HUD uh, information up so um, but I do have that pedal switch set to zoom so I can lock in on the um, on the front dash of the helicopter that's assuming that it's always visible if you're flying at night uh, it may be that the um, they're, they're just not visible depending because you don't have uh, uh, complex lighting sort of that's configurable in the cockpit so if you don't have night vision or there aren't lights backlighting those dials you may have to turn on uh, the HUD feature and you know real helicopters do have auto hover real helicopters do have um, uh, pilot heads up displays inside their uh, inside their helmets such as the Apache and things like that so you can basically suspend disbelief 
a certain amount. Okay, well there's one other feature I haven't mentioned, and that is Rota RPM. Uh, it does seem to react, not 100% uh, realistically, if you're on the ground, for example, and you, um, you press cyclic left, cyclic right, it dips your RPM, which I thought was a bit strange. And you can see I'm doing things like uh, this here, which would cause a lot of stress, um, doing basically a dead stop. Uh, it does lower the RPM. I assume you can basically stall out the um, uh, the rotor disc and your, your rotor blades will, will go into a stall. Um, and it also should drain a huge amount of engine power to, to try and keep it going. Um, so it's it's not 100% accurate. I'm pretty happy with rotor lib as it stands right now. Uh, let me know what you think. If I've got it wrong, or if you have any tips, uh, if uh, if there's things that you can add. I haven't tried the other helicopters, so I, I may do that uh, very shortly, but um, all in all, the Rotor Lib system looks like it's going to add quite a bit of complexity, and I hope, uh, I hope there's dedicated pilots that will really use this.